Hi everyone, this is part three of the Visual Sensory System series. Um, please attempt these practice problems on your own, and then we'll go through the answers with you. So, for the first set, we have a light action and energy and information. So please take the time to pause this video and um, attempt these problems in your own words. So, for light action, describe the effect of light absorption on 11 cis retinol bound within rhodopsin. When light hits rhodopsin, the 11 cis retinol gets converted to all trans retinol. This conformation can no longer bind to opsin. Um, opsin is then goes on to bind to transducin to continue the signal transduction. Now, for the energy and information question. The transmission of sensory information requires the input of free energy. Um, identify the mechanism for the input of free energy to allow the transformation of the transmission of sensory information. So the answer here we have, we can kind of think of absorption of light within a chain reaction. So free energy for the visual system comes from light. This light is absorbed by rhodopsin. Um, cis retinol is converted to all trans retinol. Opsin is activated, thus activating alpha subunit of transducin, converting GDP to GTP. The alpha subunit is released, activating cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase, which converts cyclic GMP to GMP. This is the transmission of the se sensory information. So this is the next problem that we will try. So again, go ahead and pause this video and take a minute to try these problems by yourself. All right, so for part A, you are going into a dark theater and you're coming from a sunny parking lot. Um, so your eyes have a hard time adjusting from the sun to the dim room and explain the science behind this. So when light strikes rhodopsin, your 11 cis retinol is converted to all trans retinol. Um, and this is what we call the bleached photosensitive state. Um, because there's a lag time to convert trans back to cis, um, this is why it becomes hard to see in the dark after being out in bright light for so long, um, just because a lot of your retinol is in the trans conformation instead of the 11 cis retinol transformation. Um, for part B, um, so you've just finished the film and you are going from the dim area out into the harsh sunlight. Um, and the science behind this is that during the movie, your eyes are not being stimulated by as much light compared to um, the sunny outside. Um, so therefore, you have a fair bit of 11 cis retinol and your pupils are still dilated. Um, to allow for maximum influx of light. So in the dark, your pupils are dilated for that reason. And then in like the brightness, your pupils are going to be constricted to limit how much light can pass through. Um, so when you're going from a dark state to a bright state, um, you're not in a bleach photosensitive state in the dark state. So your system is somewhat shocked and overstimulated by the sudden bright light exposure and your eyes will eventually adjust to this new level of light. All right, for our final question, please um, make sure you have watched the olfactory system videos um, before attempting this question. So for this question, we will be comparing and contrasting the role of cyclic nucleotide gated channels in the two primary sensory neurons within um, the olfactory system and within the visual sensory system. So for odor and smells, the alpha subunit of the GPCR odorant receptor activates adenylate cyclase, which converts ATP to cyclic AMP. This increase of cyclic AMP levels causes um, the binding of cyclic AMP to the ion gated channel. This opens the channel, allowing sodium and calcium to flow inside the cell, depolarizing the membrane. This depolarization causes an action potential. In contrast, for the visionary system, 
Um, light stimulates rhodopsin, which is associated with transducin and is absorbed by the 11 cis retinol, which is then converted to trans retinol. The alpha subunit activates phosphodiesterase. Um, this causes your cyclic GMP levels to fall, closing the ligand gated ion channel. Now, sodium and calcium are no longer to flow into the cell, which hyperpolarizes the membrane. This hyperpolarization induces cell signaling. All right, so just to summarize what we've learned with this series, um, vision is perhaps the best understood at the senses. So you have two classes of photoreceptor cells. Um, you have your cones, which respond to bright lights and colors. Um, and then you also have your rods, which respond only to dim light. So the photoreceptor in rods is rhodopsin, and that's a seven transmembrane receptor. So um, just your G-coupled protein receptor. Um, and that is a complex of the protein opsin and the 11 cis retinol. The absorption of light by 11 cis retinol changes its structure into that of all trans retinol, um, which then sets in motion a signal transduction pathway. And that leads to the breakdown of cyclic GMP um, to eventually cause membrane hyperpolarization and then to a subsequent nerve impulse. So good luck, happy studying, stay healthy, um, and please do not hesitate to contact Markel or I if you have um, any questions, just shoot us an email. Thanks, everyone.